So yeah, um, hello everyone, I'm Sadi and yeah, basically today I will talk about how you can use the developer tools that you already have from Flutter team itself and like the other general tools and how you can actually use them. So before I go further, who am I? Like I live in Berlin, I've been the open Flutter since like two years, three months now. Like I've been developing since the latest <coughs> alpha stages. And yeah, I work as a senior mobile engineer at Cirque. This kick scooter that you see on the street, we, uh, we are using Flutter on our maintenance app, which is basically the operations app that is used widely in the 12 different countries right now. But it's not going to be used anymore because they sold the company. And that's the story. So um, I'm a huge like community person. I like it a lot. Like last week, I was at Warsaw for Flutter Europe conference. I don't know has any, have any one of you were there in Warsaw last besides you, Vince. <laughs> okay, no one. Nice. So like it was the first like community driven conference from the community in Poland. Actually, they had like a huge conference, like 30 speakers, more than 500 attendees. I can definitely recommend for next year. It was quite nice. So yeah, I'm originally from Turkey. I've been living in Berlin since like three and a half years now, but I come from Turkey and, and one of the things that I did there is like basically I created the Flutter Turkey community there. What we do there is basically we translate the documentation and translate the blog post by of course getting the permission from the writers and also we create some content to them uh, in Turkish because like not everyone unfortunately has a chance to speak English so sometimes it's hard and we need to give them a chance to actually catch up with us and have the same knowledge that we have and last but not least what I do is I also organize the Flutter Berlin meetup so if you go to Berlin for a meetup and you will definitely see me. Yeah. So, why did I decide to talk about Dev tools? I mean, like, one reason was like last week we had 30 talks, we had like AR talks, we had like, uh, I mean, like, we had like 200 submissions and we were like eliminating them, and we saw that actually people were, people like to talk about architecture and everything, but they don't know what we have as a tool in Flutter itself. Which is quite sad because actually Flutter team, inside Flutter team, there's a big team works on dev tools and they're making a like, really nice job that we are going to see. I mean, we are going to have an overview about almost everything, but like going in detail, it's totally up to you. And basically, like, we are as strong as the tools that we have, right? I mean, like, if you have good tools in a development environment, you would feel like, okay, I'm doing something, right? I mean, for example, Android developers will know that Android Studio is shit, so we hope that we had better one, but unfortunately we don't. That's why we develop in IntelliJ now. Anyway, so that's why I changed my career. And <laughs> let's continue. We will go from the like really simple approach, okay? We will talk about first the IDEs, because I mean, how many of you are using Flutter in like real work, like daytime job, or like, okay, that's really cool. Also side projects count as well from my side. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay for me. And yeah, like this, uh, this is one of the things that people don't know because like most of the, in most of the places or in most of the platforms, they're bound to one or two things. And actually a Flutter team from the day zero came up with like three different approaches that you can use. I mean like, let's say two, but we will talk about it now. I mean, we all know what an ID is. Basically, it's the platform that we use to develop something. And it should be help us to create something that is going to be helpful for the other people, right? So it should help us to help the others. And if it goes to the other direction and turns into a fight, it's not so nice. So in Flutter, what options do we have? We have Android Studio which is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, like, in the moment that I saw IntelliJ, I just deleted my Android Studio <laughs> and directly jumped into the IntelliJ. IntelliJ is like really lightweight if you compare it to Android Studio. But like, you know, for the installation purposes and stuff, they expect you to do this. So you have a chance to develop with Android Studio. You have a chance to develop it with IntelliJ. And like a lot of web developers, background people, they use Visual Studio Code, which is quite nice because it's also like even more lightweight than IntelliJ IDEA. So like it totally depends on how you feel comfortable with. For me IntelliJ was like super fast because I knew how Android Studio worked. So I was like, okay, I know the shortcuts and stuff. I know my way around. But like for people, for example, who, was, who were doing React Native, they were using Visual Studio Code because for them it was super fast. So it totally depends on uh, what you have. But the idea is you have a chance. So this is one of the things that I would like to talk about after IDEs because like this is what makes things uh, actually possible. This is a really old GIF. So just mind the picture here, don't mind the code. My code is like, psh. I mean like it's from that one point something. So the idea is like, you know what, what makes Flutter special? It's like one of the things called hot reload, hot restart. I mean, like, the other platforms had it as well, but because of that, you know, like, the classic just-in-time compiler and head of compiler comes together and brings you a nice development environment, just-in-time compiler is the reason that we have hot reload, hot restart, head of time compiler is the reason that we have native code compilation option, which is actually a really nice chance for us to have nice performant apps. So, what Flutter brings us to the table is like, I, as I said, I come from Android background and like waiting for 10 minutes for Gradle build, going out, hanging out with friends, having lunch, coming back and seeing finally one build is done was actually one of the pains. Now, sometimes I forget if I click the button, so I click it, click it again. Maybe I'm getting old, I don't know. So like this is like, these are these like IDs and how to reload, how to restart are like, common things, if you at least like read about Flutter once, I'm sure you like somehow heard about this stuff. What I really, really like to talk about today is development tools. Because what makes this special is, as I said, like in, inside the Flutter team, there's a team basically dedicated for this job. And in my opinion, they're doing a great job. And I think we, don't, we just don't know the power of it. Everyone can hear me, right? Like. I don't feel like I'm using the microphone correctly. So if you don't hear me, just like wave me and I will ignore you. So, <laughs> of course I'm kidding. So what, I mean like this is wrong grammatically, not what is DevTools, what are DevTools? So DevTools are actually, actually a website that um, Flutter team provides us to be able, so it gives us a chance to inspect multiple parts of our apps in multiple aspect. So you can check your widget tree and how it evolves, how it builds, how fast it builds. But on the other hand, you can check the memory leaks, how your garbage collection works, how your actually Dart language allocates the memory for even your objects. You can go even that deep with these tools. So it's not just the IDs what makes this platform special or how to reload itself, but actually these development tools are giving us a chance to uh, have these options as well. So what I'm going to do now is I will give you an overview of each option that we have so you can understand actually where should you go if you want to go deeper in, in DevTools. So first, how to install the DevTools. Uh, if you want to install it in Android Studio or IntelliJ IDEA, it's like quite straightforward. When you run the application, on the right pane you will see one window and there is this uh, Dart uh, symbol there, so you can just click on it and it will install it for you in your computer. You don't need to do anything extra. So it will just install it and open it up for you and the next one it, was, it will be already installed so you can just open it up directly. And this is the same for IntelliJ and Android Studio. For Visual Studio Code, same logic. You have this like command palette in Visual Studio Code. You just open it and write like DevTools 
you can see there is an open DevTools option. You just click on that, it will do the same. Install and open the DevTools for you. And it will directly open up the web page. Last but not least, let's say that you hate yourself. You want to do something crazy. You want to activate it from the uh, command line. Now that I see it, it's not actually visible if you have bad eyes. I'm really sorry for this. Uh, in my PC it was looking okay, but I think I'm selfish. So like, what you need to do is first, you need to activate the dev tools in the global level in your computer, okay? So before that, you just uh, write pop global activate dev tools. Secondly, after you activate it, you need to say that, okay, now I have the dev tools for Dart, but I need to have the dev tools for Flutter as well. You do it one more time, Flutter pop global activate dev tools. As I said, it's not for these uh, people, but you know, like people use Vim, like Wins. So I don't know. <laughs> so now, after you do these two operations, now you have uh, installed it already. After that, what you need to do is you need to say pop global run dev tools, which means actually it's not running. And after that, you are running also for Flutter as well. <coughs> And when you run it for Flutter, it will just open the browser for you, and you will be good to go. But, you know, as a person who does this thing for two years, just use the ID. Do not do this to yourself. <laughs> so, first I will start with Flutter is Inspector itself. Like, don't mind, this is just a, like, when you run it, you will see a website like this. Don't mind the text right now, don't mind anything. This website is giving you multiple chances to go over multiple stuff. What we are going to do is, we are going to first see the Flutter Inspector page, the first tab here. This first tab is basically giving us a chance to play around in the Flutter widget tree. So you can see how your widget tree is created and what are the keys for this. If during the recreation you can actually check out if the widget is recreated or is it using the same one. because there's a really good talk from uh, Flutter team in GDD China. They are talking about elements and so on. And actually, you can see how they use it, Gesundheit, and like how it effectively can be used to identify actually the performance of Flutter itself. So like this is really useful on that case. Plus, it is like it is coming out of the box with a lot of nice options that we are going to go through right now. So first, we are going to go through select widget mode. So in this case, since I work for a scooter company, I created a simple scooter app. And this is like doing anything. It just shows some markers. I click on it, and it shows some uh, bottom sheet. And like first thing is called select widget mode. There is a button here on the left side. You can click on it and go to your emulator or simulator, whatever you use, and click on one of the widgets. And it will automatically pick that one in your widget tree, and also in your device, you will see what kind of widget is it, is that. So like, in my case, this is a rich text. And in my widget tree, if you go back, you can see that it's actually directly selected. So you can actually see through your widget tree and see actually how it works. And yeah, let's continue. The second one is refresh tree. This is really useful. For example, when you make a change in your widget tree and rerun the app, this website will not update itself directly. So getting the latest information out of your widget tree, you need to refresh it one more time. And this is how it's used. Just next button, next, um, next to select widget mode. And you, you have refresh tree. You can just click on that, and it, it will update your widget tree so you can see the latest version of it. And as I said, you can see which uh, widgets are recreated again, and so on. You're thinking that you should have given a break, right? Everybody's like, yeah, come on, dude. Wrap it up. Come on, it's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> one thing about Flutter itself is like, it promises us 60 frames per second. So how we are sure about this is basically what we need to do is we can use something called performance overlay. 
So when you click on it in your DevTools, in your device, it will open up a graph on top of your screen. And so you can actually see when each time that it renders a frame, you can see the quality of it, you can see how many percent of uh, memory it is using, if it's like how many seconds is it taking, and so on. It's a really useful product if you like uh, the graphs on the uh, device. But obviously, there is an alternative for this on DevTools as well. But we will see it later. And like slow animations. I didn't know that this existed until I started to use iOS Simulator. That like you can actually like slow, <laughs> like have a slow motion of animations. I don't know if, if we have it in, still like after six years of Android, I still don't know if we have a slow motion animation thing in the emulator. Do we have it? I didn't know that. I, I was like super shocked. I was like, what? So amazing. Anyway, so like we can use the same screen. We can just like toggle the slow animations button there and we can directly see the all animations happening inside the app will be slowing down regardless of, regardless of the device that you have. Next thing, paint baseline. I mean, you will work with designers. I don't, do we have any designers here? We tried to bring one, but he didn't want to. Paint. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, like, for, I need to I'm really happy that there's none, but still. Uh, the problem here is sometimes we do something out of what designer tells us, right? And when we do it, it's really hard to like be in the same side and like try to have the uh, baselines of the text. Like sometimes the font is different, so baseline of some characters goes down and designer goes crazy. So for actually proving that you didn't do something wrong, <laughs> you can do paint baselines button. You can just click on it and it will draw some baselines. So you can see how it works inside the um, device itself. I mean, this is not a real device, obviously. I used an amazing frame here, but yeah, normally it shows nice. And repaint rainbow is, I think, like one of my favorite ones. So this is how this works. So you have a like, scale of colors, right? Just imagine it like a rainbow. And it starts from one point, which is the green, and goes to, I think, like, um, like dark blue or black or something like this. So each time that widget is recreated or that frame is recreated, uh, the color around that widget changes. What this means is, for example, in this one, uh, the map widget doesn't create itself when you rerun the app, but this one is recreated because of some um, <coughs> operations and you can see that this actually has some blue around this has like normally this has like darker green than this so you can see that which part has been created the most which one has the most uh, interaction so you can have a visual res representation about what's going on in your widget tree instead of just like uh, trying to read the graph and print the god about this so debug paint this is one of the things that I really liked in Android we have it here as well. I think we definitely have it in iOS. Do we have something like this? No. Okay. So we don't have it. Yeah. So what this brings back to the table is sometimes like when we develop a layout, it's really hard to understand the edges of our uh, layout and like where it ends, where it begins. For example, sometimes one widget is invisible and you're like, what the hell did I do wrong? And it's not showing. And you see that you actually make it expanded so each fills every gap possible and you don't see the other widgets. So for seeing this kind of stuff, you can use the debug paints to be able to understand which parts of your layout has been painted inside your uh, widget tree so you can see the actual limits of it and you can understand what you have done, what you have missed and so on. And debug banner platform picker, these are two things that I really like because not everyone has a chance to have a Mac. And like that's why, for example, that's why I bought this Windows as well. I'm creating some videos for the community and like I know that most of the people has Windows. Like we are lucky to have a Mac, especially like in my country, you need to sell your kidney or something to just buy a Mac. <laughs> and so like what we do here is like in the first one, when you create a uh, Flutter application actually, it will show you one um, 
banner on the top right, right? And like, if you don't like it and you want to make it invisible, you can just click on this one and it will make it invisible. The other thing is, my favorite one, is platform iOS. So you can pick actually the platform that you want to see in your emulator or simulator, it doesn't matter which device you have, and it will show it as it is there. For example, you can have a list, and you can have an Android emulator, like it is here, and you can change the platform there, and it will have the, for example, bouncing effect like it is in iOS. So you can actually see how it behaves in iOS directly without having a simulator. I mean, obviously it's not that easy, but at least behavior-wise, you can understand how it works. Oh, I talked a lot. So next one, timeline. First, I will show you the empty timeline because I think timeline, timeline is like the most important one. Um, if you're a performance, uh, I don't want to say maniac, what, what, what should I say nicely? Performance uh, insistent person, <laughs> what you can do is, <laughs> you can use actually the timeline. So in the timeline, you, like each of the bars that you see here is one frame. So you can, for the each frame creation, you will have one uh, bar here. And it will have a visual representation. So for the UI uh, thread, it will sh use the light blue. You can change the colors. For the GPU, it will show the um, dark blue. And like you can understand that what, what are you doing wrong? For example, if you're blocking the UI thread or if you're doing something more than you should be doing. I know you're thinking about the red ones, I will explain. But like what you need to see here is you can see actually the burden that you're causing to your UI thread or your G GPU directly on this uh, graph. Let's talk about the red ones. Red ones are called, I think, jank. I hope I'm uh, trans, um, pronouncing it correctly. It's like J-A-N-K, so it should be jank. And uh, so basically for promising the 60 frames per second, you need to create at least like one frame in like 16 milliseconds or so. If it's longer than that, then it means that you are doing something wrong and this will not, co uh, this will not give you 60 frames per second. And these red ones are giving you these errors. So you are doing something wrong here. It, it will not give you 60 frames per second. There will be like frame drops and you need to fix this. So even like just look, looking at this graph in a short amount of time will give you a chance to actually see what you're doing wrong or right in the uh, development cycle itself. What it else does it give? Like you, we have seen the graph. But when you click on the graph, like one of the frames that I talked about, it will give you a chance to see multiple tabs. I'm not going to go over all of them because I know <laughs> it will be too much. But like what it gives us a chance is like you can see, for example, I mean right now it's zero milliseconds because like I had a really, 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 really uh, small app. But you can see, for example, how it is created here and the total amount of time that is uh, passed to create that element. So you can actually see the effect that you have in your platform in that certain frame in the creation of widgets. And you can also like, you, you should go from bottom to top, by the way, for each element, so you can see where did it start and going up. Memory. So, obviously like we are software developers, right? We need to be smart about everything. I mean like we have like crazy phones, all of us, and like right now, these kind of stuff shouldn't be a problem, but actually not everybody has the same chances that we have. So we need to be also as a good engineers or good developers, we need to be careful about what we're creating. So what we need to do is basically, we need to check out, for, the, for example, each object that we are creating, how it's handled. Are we, care, are we caring about like memory leaks? Or basically, if our app is smart enough to take care of the garbage collection and so on. So for this one, Let's go back one more time. So you can see the overview of like your like the capacity of the snapshot, uh, and and you can get some snapshots, and you can see the details about sorry <coughs> about the objects that has been created and how much size does it require to be there to be there, and in the detail you can see that actually at what point you have the garbage collection, 
what was your capacity, and how much memory that you saved, and so on. So it's quite nice. As I said, like if you're a memory nerd, uh, that was the word that I'm looking for, and you would be l loving this. And like there is also a performance tab. We are almost there. We are almost there. <laughs> Performance tab is also really important to be able to understand, actually, like, you can use debugger, debugger that I'm going to talk about soon to have the um, hierarchy of the methods that you're, you have called before. But in the performance tab, you, should, you can actually see that uh, which method has been called to, for example, parse the data, and which method has been called to create the object and which method has been created to create the widgets and so on. So if you want to see this and like, like for example see in the which part that you're spending the most time or for example if you have a screen freeze you can see that oh, okay like this method causes a problem and so I can fix it. And for, for like this is one of the usages obviously it's like totally dependent on your imagination. Debugger is like basically uh, it's like most of the platforms, you have a debugger, you can put breakpoints in that, and when you hit that breakpoint, in the pane that you have on the left side, you will have the certain variables at that moment, and their values, so you can track down your errors, like, I mean, I'm not going to teach you how you can use debugger here, but this is the way to do it. And last about this uh, DevTools is logging. Basically, like you have a logging system inside your uh, IDs as well, but sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes you have crashes in your platform and you want to see them because, I mean, like you can't see them. You need to open Android Studio, you, know, you need to attach the debugger or like same for the explorer. You need to open it and see where did you de uh, do wrong. And this is sometimes too much. Actually, this is always too much, but anyway. So like you can use the logging directly to be able to see those crashes and actually have an impact in that moment and trace back in this, like for example, you can see the, even the data that has been transferred in that moment and like how many seconds that has been created. It's too much, so you, you need to filter some things. But in general, it works really fine to find your way around. So I want to talk about two new things. So how many of you heard about Flutter for Red? Nice. So, uh, obviously, like, the previous website is not written in Flutter for Web because it has been created even before the Flutter for Web project. So, what the Flutter team did is basically they used the Flutter for Web and actually started to recreate this website with it. And this project is right now in, like, alpha. But what it does is it actually brings back nice features like you can directly change some stuff and fix your errors like this in the moment by using the platform itself because like of the platform compatibility that you have. This is the thing that I stole from Flutter Interact. So if you've seen it before, I didn't make it. And, but it's really useful and yeah, it really helps with like problem solving because I mean like if you're, uh, if you're a Flutter developer, you know that there's one error, this overflow, pixel overflow thing that is just like pain. This is actually a, one of the best chances to fix it directly in the platform itself. So it's really useful to have it. And yeah, I'm done finally. Thank you very much for listening to me. So you can ask me anything you want, except how did I get this? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, first of all, uh, nice talk. Um, I have one question because the last time I was opening this debug view, it's been four months or even longer, and I remember that they had a graphical view where you see all the threads and also what the pipeline is doing and all the stuff with those weird arrows and shit, is that gone now? Because I saw that they updated the layout and everything, or did you just not put it into the presentation? I didn't put it because it's like, too it's complex. Like two layers down. Okay. In the, um, in the performance one, yeah. it, it's like two layers down. I didn't want to go two layers down. Yeah, I understand I just that. wanted to, like, as I said, 
I, I already talked 30 minutes. And if yeah, you true, talk true. about it, I will talk until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no. and, and I don't want that. Okay. <laughs> and neither do you. <laughs> true, true. Okay, thanks, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So is it logging real time or is something real like time? It's real time. Yeah. Or does it? Uh, so you said that when it crashes, then it generates some kind of log. It keeps the latest state. It's not like the Android ADB. When it crashes and you, for example, you close the window, okay. it doesn't like delete every log. Mm -hmm. It actually keeps it. And there's a stack trace also in it, or yeah. part of it. Okay. Yeah. Stack trace is there as well. All right. Thanks. It has everything. <laughs> I have another question um, about the logging. Is it just uh, the logging from uh, whatever the Dart PM is doing, or does it also contain Application the stuff? Application level as well. So like whenever I do something it. native on the Xcode, uh, on, uh, yeah. okay, nice. Yeah, cool. it keeps it. You can use some, like for example, the Google Team packages. You can use some of them, mm -hmm. and you can see actually the logger works with them directly. Like right. this method channel using packages, just use one of them, mm -hmm. and you can actually see that it directly logs some stuff from the uh, platform itself. Yes, um, do you think Flutter gets stable? <coughs> because the last time I was using uh, Flutter, I used some plugins and they were all unstable. I have to clone them and modify on some areas, so that's a like the uh, right thing. If you can give me a like, certain example uh, about which part that you have problem, I can maybe uh, Help you more because, like, uh, from my point of view, I didn't have those crashes, so I, I want to help you. So, if you remember it, maybe I can actually tell. I mean, okay. you don't have to remember now, we can talk later as well. Okay. <laughs> Just tell me which one so we can talk about it. But do you have the feeling Flutter gets? I mean, like, I, ch I left my six year Android career and doing Flutter right now, so I believe in Flutter. I go around the world and talk about it, so I hope I'm not doing for nothing, but. I mean, I like. I will be highly biased on this. Like, I will give you millions of reasons to pick that one, but like, you know, sometimes people need only one bad reason to not pick it. So, it's like it's a like it's a matter of a uh, mindset. So, this, as I said, from your perspective, the tech problems they are terrible. So we can talk about it. Uh, maybe it's old ones. Maybe they are already fixed, or maybe they like. Uh, you use them when they were more basic, so to say. I can't just give you an answer right now that it's amazing. Like from my point of view, I mean, I use it right now with like six projects, big projects, like from scale of like 50,000 users to 1 million users. And I didn't have any problems so far in my projects. So it depends on, as I said, like the... Um, like the thing that you're doing, what was, what were the libraries that you have used, and so on. As I said, we can discuss it. It's totally fine. <coughs> Any more questions? Yes, I have another yeah. one. So, um, you want to give it for me? Okay. Yes, give it the mic. Um, you showed a few performance analyzing tabs, basically, from the Flutter Dev Tools. Yeah. I'm just wondering, they are only based on your the phone you are using, if you connect the phone, or on the emulator? I mean, like, it depends on the device that you're using. Like, uh, if you're using an emulator or a simulator, it will calculate it according to that. If you're using a real device, for example, Samsung S4, it will calculate the Samsung S4. If you have Pixel 4, it will calculate the Pixel yeah, so, 4. So you would suggest to, if you want to support weak, Devices you would suggest to go for low-end low really devices. <laughs> okay, go low low-end devices. I mean, like it, I mean, from my point of view, right now it's crazy that like low-end device right now means Google Pixel One <laughs> or something like this. Like even like Samsung S4, most of the uh, companies already stopped like giving support for uh, Marshmallow. It's insane. Not not Marshmallow. Uh, KitKat and like. Yeah, and lollipop exactly. I need to remember the alphabet first. <laughs> yeah, I mean like. And so I have another question. Yes, sir. Um, it's about animations in general. Yes, that's my. So if you do a lot of animations in Flutter, yeah, then uh, you really get performance issues 
pretty soon, especially when you do want to do special things. Yeah. And what is your experience on the involvement of performance regarding animations? So I I will have a three different answer to this. Like first answer is there is one talk from Emily and Andrew that they did last week. So check out the Flutter Europe YouTube channel. You will see it. You can actually see how it actually works. Secondly, before you, like for me, before I do the animations right, I needed to learn how actually Flutter works, like elements and like render objects and so on. These are complicated subjects sometimes, so you just need to go, go through it and like see how it works. Because um, like widget creation, frame, frame rendering, these kind of stuff highly relies on some things that we actually ignore, like keys, actually. If you use keys, in your application, you can actually see the effect of the performance in it. And if you don't want to use keys, and if you do, like if you do, for example, a set state all the time in each frame, frame change, even with a simple animation, you will have this problem. And with a really complicated animation, in a low-end device, I didn't have any problems because I was using the keys, I was using the out-of-the-box stuff like animated builder and so on, and that was working fine for me. But I need to see your code to be able to actually really answer and tell you. But I can just tell that if you use out of the box stuff coming up, uh, from Flutter SDK, like animated widget, animated builder, or like basically simple uh, attractions like scale transitions and so on and so forth, they do this key stuff in the background for you. And even this has extra ways to uh, improve them. So, like, what we need to understand is, am I talking too much? No. Okay. If you're bored, you can leave. I can talk about Flutter until tomorrow. <laughs> so like, uh, what we need to understand is how the, uh, how the graphics engine in the background works, how Flutter renders the widgets, and how actually we paint this stuff. So like, all of these concepts are basically one talk each itself. So that's why I said like, you need to, see this talk from Emily and Andrew, and then you need to take care of about the things that you are doing in your code. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, uh, I can share it with slides later on. There's one uh, blog post from one developer in Berlin, he works in Groupon, and he also explains why the animations can be a bit slow if you don't do the right things in a blog post. So you can also see Maybe you have some things that you're doing in that blog post and you can actually improve. It's a matter of practice. I mean, it takes time because like, I'm really sorry. Like, uh, Skia engine itself is like a crazy efficient engine. Like, everybody, like, everybody even this, uh, Microsoft Edge is like, started to use Chromium. Chromium itself inside has like V8 engine, right? And this V8 engine was basically the, a groundbreaking engine that they created for the web rendering. And like basically Skia comes from this V8 engine. Like they just chop off everything web related. They had the graphic uh, rendering part. And basically they created this uh, render engine. So this engine itself already somehow proved itself that it can give what we want. But on the other hand, we need to be um, we need to understand how the system works as well to be able to just answer uh, the right, um, like to be able to have the right amount of performance. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, when it comes to uh, this performance um, visualization, uh, I think it was to mention uh, that you need to, to test your app in profile mode. Yes. Um, because the emulator interpreted mode is too slow and gives you the wrong numbers. That's true. I forgot um, to mention that. Uh, my question is, um, there is this other tool, or there had been this other tool named Observatory, that uh, gave even more information about which widget is causing how much bloat on uh, the graphics. Is that still in development, still available? They are like, uh, so Observatory is shut down, uh -huh. it's like right now part of the dev tools. You, you should be able it to... Is, it's more in dev tools. Yeah, exactly. You should okay. be able to, like, I think 
and like since six or seven months or so, maybe a bit earlier, uh -huh. even like earlier than that, they shut down and actually not shut down, but merged this stuff inside the DevTools itself. Uh -huh. So um, you should be able to do everything that you're supposed to do with that. Plus like these DevTools, like one thing to keep in mind is, uh, thanks for reminding me this by the way, like this doesn't profile everything in the release mode. This profiles stuff in the debug mode. So what you might see as a performance flow in the debug mode or with the, uh, what was the name of the? Profile mode. Profile mode uh, actually might be behaving different inside the release mode, but obviously we shouldn't take the chance and we need to be using our tools carefully and get rid of them as soon as we have the chance. Awesome. Any more questions? Awesome. Thank you for listening. <laughs>